be honest, I wasn't even initially going to speak in this video, but there is something that you should see because it is pretty incredible. I'm just going to go to a blank patch here. I initially wanted the rack version of the Hydrosynth, and that's because I just have a real estate problem in my studio and I have no shortage of keyboards that I could hook up with a rack synth. However, I had no idea that this had poly aftertouch, and now that I'm actually playing with it, it's blowing my mind. So let me show you how it works really fast. It's not going to sound pretty, but this is probably the best way that I can show you the functionality of poly aftertouch. So here we just have a saw oscillator. I'm going to change it to something a little less annoying, like a sign. Okay. And I'm going to go to mod matrix. I'm going to assign. I should have mono aftertouch, which is basically the aftertouch of every single key. And then poly aftertouch, which is the aftertouch of the key that I'm pressing down. Like basically I can have multiple aftertouches at once. So uh, oscillator, let's just have it control pitch. And now it's just spiked way up. So when I hit this and if I press it a little bit harder, I can go up an entire octave. Okay, to give you an example of how the poly aftertouch works, I'm just gonna play a C chord with this hand and I'm gonna keep my fingers very still and then I'm gonna play a G over here and I'm gonna press down on the G. But not on the other keys. But if I wanna press down on the other keys, Okay, so I made a pad, and I'm just going to turn all the effects off initially so we could see how it is playable. I'm just using a sustain pedal there. I want to talk about what are in the guts and the core features of the Hydrosynth rather than just showing you a bunch of cool sounds. Um, there's probably a lot of material showing you this exact thing on YouTube, but everybody's different. Everybody comes into it from a different perspective. The manual is still in a plastic bag, never opened it up, never read a thing about it. This is all just my intuitive discovery. And so maybe it's a little different or more or less helpful than others. So uh, quickly, I'll do it very quickly. Your initialized preset... Um, just basically initialized patch sounds like this. It's just a saw, right? It's saw on oscillator one. You have um, a lot of different options for waveforms, a sine, a triangle, triangle saw, saw, square, pulse one, pulse two, pulse three. Now, I'm gonna keep moving forward. I'm not gonna go through every single one because it gets a bit extensive. I just want you to look at this really fast as I scroll through the available waveforms. Eventually it just turns into harmonics. Okay, great. So, um, we also, we have the option of using any one of those waveforms on all three oscillators. And remember, this is a polyphonic synth. This isn't mono only. So if we hit voice, we can change it to mono. Um, we could change it also to unison. It's not going to really sound that impressive with a sine wave. We could choose a random phase. Uh, we have warm mode, um, analog feel, um, detuning all of the pitch bends, glides, we could set everything to a scale of our choosing if we like. Uh, so let's go back to that oscillator. And let's talk about the modes because oscillator one and two, you can either use single oscillator mode or boop, wave scan mode, which is basically scanning through a wave table of up to eight waves. So we can either make a bunch of really crazily different waves here and just go through this the hard way. And uh, I keep ending on horizon for some reason. Keep moving forward here. All right, so this is a bunch of, uh, they're all from different wave tables. And we could go back and then hit this and this will wave scan for us. 
Okay, another easy way of doing that that I discovered would be just to go to your wave, the, the same thing, hit down shift and hit this first one and it just organizes them in order. So uh, if I wanted to just go all the way to the end here, um, let's go to Chandum. All right, so after all that cool stuff, let's just go back to single mode and sine wave. How exciting. The reason we're doing this is because we have four mutants to choose from. Mutants can be, uh, well, they could be FM operators. This is a linear FM operator. They could be a wave stack. They can be a uh, oscillator sync. They can be a uh, pulse width. Um, a harmonic, a phase differential, all right? So it gets really, really advanced, but let's just stick with the uh, linear FM in, I guess, DX7 mode, right? So our source is just another sine wave, um, or our source can be oscillator two, for example, which let's turn into a sine wave. Okay, so that's our source, and uh, still should sound pretty normal, because it's just a one ratio. It'll sound a little quirky now. So get some different sounds. Let's bring that ratio up to three. Three is a good ratio. This is such a weird thing to harp about, but I'm just not a fan of this feedback in comparison to like a DX7. But whatever, I don't really use feedback that much anyway when I'm using FM, so it doesn't really matter all that much. Okay, great. So that is a one operator FM patch. Now let's go to a, another mutant over here. And this mutant will use mutant number three as its source. And the ratio can be four. So since we're choosing mutant three, we should actually do something with it. That sounds pretty cool. How about LFO three will control uh, the depth of mutant three by just a little bit. And to do that, we're gonna go to the mod matrix. We're going to hit assign, we're gonna hit LFO three. Then we're gonna go down, then we're going to hit mutant three. And then we are going to have it control the depth. And then just by a little bit. And now, let's turn that depth all the way down. Let's go back to LFO three. Let's turn it into a sample and hold. Our LFOs have a lot of different options. Uh, we can, do all your normal LFO stuff. We have a couple different pulses. We uh, have noise, we have random, we have step, which is a step sequencer. I believe if I go down, we can actually edit those steps, but I'm not gonna mess with that right now. Um, so let's go to just sample and hold. Uh, let's BPM sync it. Let's make it, I guess, a quarter note. That sounds fine to me. And smoothen it a little bit. And let's see how it sounds. Pretty crazy. All right, let's go into the filter world here. So first of all, in your mixer, you can choose between uh, what filter you wanna have this sent off to, which uh, would matter if I were actually editing my filters. All right, so here's this one, filter two. Let's just make that one sound like that. And we can actually send it between one or the other uh, as a series or as a parallel. So let's try that again. Sounds a little crazier now. So we have a lot of different options with our filters. Um, I'm not gonna go through them all. Uh, you should know that you have a vowel filter. Um, it kisses a heart at you when you first start. There we go, cool. Neat, okay. Uh, let's just go with Fat24. For some reason, I really like that one. It sounds really nice. Yeah, that's a good filter. Okay, uh, LFO one amount. Pretty dubstepy. Okay. Let's use that, um, let's have it be a saw down. And let's BPM sync it to uh, 
oh, I guess a quarter note. Uh, if I want to hold this note down, if I'm sick of using my hand to do it, I could just hit shift latch and that'll sustain it. Okay, now um, let's go to LFO 4. LFO 4 is going to be another sample and hold. Uh, it's going to be BPM synced, let's say, to 16th. All right, and LFO 4 is going to control the speed or rate of LFO 1. All right, so now if we want to do a little bit more modulation, but we don't feel like using all of our LFOs, we can actually use an envelope here. Um, we could set an envelope. Envelope three can go to mutant one. It can control, controlling the ratios is gonna be really noisy. So let's just go with depth. And you might be wondering, why did you just do that? That's just an envelope, but we can loop our envelopes infinitely. We could free run them. We can adjust uh, exponential curves in them, almost like how you would see with like a maths module or something like that, even the release curve. And I guess if we want to get even more rhythmic, we can uh, create another sample and hold here that is BPM synced to let's just say a uh, quarter note dot. And that will be in a mod matrix. LFO 5 will control the rate of LFO 4. All right, so I think we got a handle on that. Let's look at the artifacts. Uh, we have pre-effects, which are like chorus, flanger, rotary, phaser, a bunch of different things. Phaser's nice if you're making pads. I don't really use uh, pre-effects like this unless I'm making pads. I mean, I guess you could use a flanger and make some pretty cool sounds, but... Uh, post effects, I don't really ever use post effects. I mean, I suppose a compressor could be nice sometimes, but um, it has a side chain or some other things, but it has an EQ. But really, if it were up to me, the delay and reverb would be at the end of both of these effects, and they would just both be pre effects, or one would be pre one, pre two. But let's uh, look at the delay. The delay is not terribly interesting, uh, it's not terribly boring either, it works just fine. Uh, BPM sync it. The panning delay, basic stereo delay, and then we have reverse delay. Cool. Reverb. Uh, we have hall. Let me turn this off so we could hear the tails. You can freeze it like that. The reverb sounds a million times better than what I would hear on like a Roland FA-08 or something. Uh, sounds better than the Deep Minds reverb, which is actually pretty good. So that's saying a lot for a onboard reverb, it's great. Is it going to replace your reverb rack unit or your reverb pedals? No, you're going to use the reverb you like with this and likely come out of this dry. The real power is not in the effects, but they did not skimp on the effects. They did a pretty good job. Um, room's pretty good. I actually like room. Uh, plate is good. Um, I feel like my, I, I'm a huge reverb dork, so bear with me. If you're not familiar with this channel already, then you have no idea what you're in for. If you bring the tone down like to n minus 25 on plate and then low damp from like 20 upwards, um, high damping doesn't really matter. The plate can sound pretty decent. <laughs> It also has cloud, which is interesting. Cloud's kind of like a particle reverb that, where the comb filters are a bit further spread out. Yeah. 
weirdly, I like the tale of Cloud better than anything else. It's just that initial part is so stringy. Yeah, I suppose if you are putting reverb on a pad where you have a slower attack and you don't have any sort of percussive hit sound, this would be the one to choose. Good to know. This is really dorky, but one of the patches I made when I first made this, I wanted to see if the operators and the algorithms behaved sonically the same way that like a Yamaha DX7 does, like how true to that form of FM it is with linear FM. And so I tried to make a bell using only sine waves and ratios from those sine waves. And um, this is what it sounds like. Probably should make it ring out a little bit longer since it is a bell and bells tend to do that. I actually think that sounds pretty good. That's just a three operator bell and it's only using two envelopes in the algorithm. And so, yeah. By the way, I don't know if I actually fooled anybody, but the beginning of this video, all the sound design was done here. Using the polyphonic aftertouch to adjust the speed of my insects. I'm gonna play around a little bit more, maybe with my hands, maybe with a generative sequencer on my iPad. Who knows? But if you like this video, if you learned anything, subscribe to the channel. If there's anything you want me to cover in the future, let me know in the comments. If you like music, I got like over 25 hours of it available on Bandcamp, and you could enjoy that or not enjoy that, but either way, you would be supporting this channel in the process. All right, I'll see you next week. Bye.